I've always wanted to do the David Attenborough voice. I'm in the Kabachi Reed. It's a wonderful wetlands area in Croatia. They call it the Amazon of Europe. I'm going to find out why. The Kapachki Reet Nature Park is in the northeastern corner of Croatia, near the town of Osijek and close to the borders with Hungary and Serbia. It's a fascinating and beautiful part of Europe. And since it's very hard for me to go anywhere without taking my bike, I've persuaded the head of a local NGO, Green Osijek, Jasmin Sadikovic, to guide me around and take me to his favourite spots. Uh, this place is called uh, Amazon of Europe because it really reminds on, on the real Amazon in Brazil. And uh, it's big, it's wild and it's pristine and it's, it's so precious. It's full of wildlife, it's full of pristine and untouched uh, landscapes and uh, it's, it really reminds on the real Amazon. Yasmin and I are not alone in this ride of ecological discovery. We've also been joined by the WWF Austria's Lisa Wolf. Austria is one of five European countries that have worked together to create a biosphere reserve stretching from the Mura River in Austria over 700 kilometres through Slovenia, Hungary, Croatia and Serbia. That's the true Amazon of Europe. And the project is aimed at preserving wetlands, which Lisa says are crucial to us all here in Europe. We need them and yet they are threatened. Their number is declining, uh, but nevertheless, they store fresh water. Um, they are retention areas when it comes to flooding, so they are very important for the rivers, uh, for the river systems. They control the groundwater. They are habitat and home to a lot of different species. They are their playground. And they fix carbon, so they help mitigating climate change. I've heard them described as the secret heroines of the fight against runaway climate change. Clearly, we need wetlands. Um, we've got to protect what we've got, but can you restore wetlands? Yes, it's definitely possible. And uh, through the nature restoration law, um, we would have the possibility to restore way more of these wetlands. I wanted to understand a bit more about the dynamics of these precious but dwindling wetlands. What makes them so important? I asked Yasmin to take us to one of his favourite spots to explain more. Now we are situated in the centre of Nature Park Opachkirit in the floodplain area. And uh, why the biodiversity is so rich in, the, in, in this place? Because we still uh, have a natural, completely natural pro processes in this area where the rivers are meandering and uh, landscapes are so, so diverse. So you have a shallow water, you have deep water, you have a different types of forests and trees. So different conditions are good for different types of animals. So they're good for biodiversity, which is very important. But also, by giving the rivers room to spread... They help avoid destructive floods. When the water is high, the water from the big river goes into the floodplains. And then it creates such a diverse um, uh, uh, river morphology as, as, as we see here. We cycle back to Yasmin's eco-lodge to meet a man called Nikola Batakovic. He works for Croatian Water on some of the restoration projects in the area. That largely involves removing dikes or other barriers so that areas that had been dried out because of man-made engineering can be flooded again and the area of wetlands can be expanded. The area around Osijek, as well as other parts of Croatia, have been hit by damaging floods in recent years and this restoration might help tame the mighty rivers. Yes, they will uh, slow, slow a bit uh, these uh, high water levels because the river will uh, share there, uh, share uh, alongside the, the restored area and it will certainly help this problem. You might have noticed how controversial the concept of nature restoration has become. The EU nature restoration law barely limped through the European Parliament this year. Nicola believes in his region the key to boosting restoration is to persuade local people near the wetlands why it's in their interest to restore the natural environment. A uh, lot of talking and a lot of uh, 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 organising some uh, trainings for, for the local people and uh, we need to share our work to the communities and uh, hopefully that will uh, help people to understand uh, this important task we are doing. Honestly, I could cycle here all day. It is so beautiful, cruising at a low cadence, enjoying seeing a lot of the nature, but not overly disturbing it, as we might have done if we were travelling by motor vehicles. Lisa agrees that cycling 
is the perfect way to travel in the Amazon of Europe. It's a slower way of experiencing the area. You have the smells, you have the wind, you have the sounds of the birds. Um, and uh, it's easy to stop somewhere, have a little coffee, have a little chat with the local people, local community. Um, and it's just um, a great way to explore the area. Actually, we could have cycled over 1,000 kilometres on the newly established Amazon of Europe bike trail that connects all five nations of the biome. One day, I swear I will ride every single kilometre because even just riding this small snippet is like a dream come true. Just cycling along, I'm having a bit of a biodiversity adventure. We've seen a black stork circling in the sky, some heron, a, a cormorant flying low over the river by the side of the road little turtles i love turtles so this is a bit of a a bit of a, a glorious day for me the bike network seems to me to be a symbol of cross border cooperation and an open minded international outlook is important in nature protection says lisa you definitely need cooperation when it comes to large scale project and especially um, nature knows no borders, you know. So working together is um, essential, is the essence of creating something that uh, in that scale, so large scale project. It is easy here in the Kapachki Rit Nature Park in Croatia to understand how important nature really is. But often, in our hectic, mostly urban-based lives of constant financial worry, we can forget the true value of nature. There have been protests against the EU nature restoration law. Nature has been depicted as a luxury that we can't really afford. But nature, of course, is not a luxury. And these wetlands are certainly not a luxury. They are essential. They're the basis of our lives, our health and even our wealth. Without uh, those wetlands, you wouldn't have tap water. It's as easy as that. So we need nature. We need to restore it uh, and we need to, to keep it uh, lively um, because without it, um, we're nothing.